Hello, this is Linda Joe Hefner, the author of Tendencies, My Sailor's Story. I'm joined together by Sergeant Major uh, Greg, Gregory Leal. Gregory Leal was born and raised in Abilene, Texas, and enlisted in the Marine Corps in May of 1976. Uh, over the course of his career, uh, Sergeant Major Leal participated in operations Desert Shield, Desert Storm, Joint Task Force 6, Counter Drug Operations, Anvil 2, Desert Fox, Southern Watch, Enduring Freedom, and the Iraqi War. His personal wars Legion of Merit, Bronze Star with Combat V, the Vice Meritorious Service Award, One Gold Star, the Navy Achievement Medal with Two Gold Stars, and the Combat action ribbon. He currently holds a second degree black belt in the Marine Corps martial arts program. And not only that, he has written a book. This book is a lovely book. It's called Amongst Warriors, and it's a collection of poems and short stories uh, about his time uh, in the Marine Corps, which is long, long time here. He was quite the guy. And uh, he talks about a lot in here about uh, the issue of PTSD, which was quite prevalent amongst Marines and sailors, soldiers, and all the people who served our country. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Gregory Leal, and you got the floor, so it's yours. Thank you, Linda. Uh, thanks for having me. I, yeah, and you you hit it right on the on the nose with my book about you know amongst warriors is the young guys. It's that door kicker. It's that first marine you know say, uh, sailor soldier who's come in through that door, kicks that door in, and he throws that grenade, flashbang, a smoke, and just everything. Victory depends on him. Enlisted marines. The, the entire, doesn't matter which war you've ever been, enlisted, not only Marines, but sailors also, and, and soldiers and, and airmen, the enlisted, they own the battlefield. It's theirs. And they, they have to own it because what's in front of them is the enemy straightforward, in your face. You know, you're not sitting in the back, uh, you know, some some officer general or whatever the rank may be, you know, drawing pictures and, you know, big arrows on the map and then get all the credit when everything's over because, well, I took my men. No, no, the men, the men, those guys that just came out of high school, 18, 19 years old and are trained to kick that door in. They're the winners. Everything depends on them. And when they run into that door and the, the enemy is confused, they, or they already know you're coming and they have all those, their weapons pointing to that door. So, wow. I mean, you talk about intense and, have, and I've done that before and it just, you don't even think about it. You're just going in to take these people down. Uh, you know, there's been, there's been people in the past who've told me that, uh, Oh, I just, I just kill everything. Well, what are you doing here? And I'm not talking about current, you know, some of the some of the wars past. And uh, I said, well, what are you doing here? If you're here to free the people, why are you killing everybody? And in our case, when we came through, you know, it was, it was during the invasion. There's no rest positions, fallback positions. There's none of that. It's go, go, go. And if you have that break, it's not to eat. It's to clean your weapon and reload. And sometimes it's on the run, but that's what you do. That's the only thing that counts. And when you ask for resupply and you have you have a choice because you know the limited supply of of, uh, of helicopters and, and and just the intensity of the war, can they get close enough? And you know, that what do you ask for? More ammo. That's it. Now if we can have some water, that'd be nice. But the first thing you ask for is more ammo. So uh, my book though, however, is dedicated to a young man from uh, Guatemala. And uh, he was the first Marine killed in action in Umcasar in a battle there 
with uh, he was second. He was uh, I'm sorry, yeah, second battalion, first marine. So one of our subunits, but that was a task task force Tarawa. That's a whole another story. But this young man, and I don't know if you can you can see it, but this young man's family was uh, killed in a car accident in Guatemala. So that left him and his sister, you know, without ham, uh, uh, homeless and, and without a family. So he, uh, him and his sister travel from there to the United States. We can't get people in this country to walk across the street, but these people come all the way from Guatemala to become U.S. citizens. So he was there. Uh, he was fifteen. I, I can't remember if she was younger or older, but uh, and they were adopted by a family in Pacoima. California. And then when 9-11 happened, he told his sister that I want to give back to the country that gave me so much. I mean, when's the last time you heard somebody say that? You know, we're talking about, you know, a U.S. citizen. Uh, well, when I've asked people, they'll, they'll sit there and tell you, oh, it's not my war. Really? Because you're just claiming that this is your country and, and it should be all yours and nobody nobody else. Well, we're all immigrants. So I don't know what you're talking about. But uh, and it's they want to talk. You know, the mouths are like this. And then when you tell them to do something, it's like that they start doing the, you know, backup thing. Right. I even had a person tell me once he, he said, oh, my wife won't let me. Really? Did you just say that? Did you really just say that? And it's embarrassing, but he doesn't, you know, he doesn't look at it as embarrassing. You know, he's, they're all, always looking for a way out. My son's going to go to college. Yeah. You know what? I, I have my Marines are college, you know, guys. So get, you know, forget about that. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons, excuses, but the, the, the strong men and women, they, boom, they go down, they enlist. There's no, yeah, I'm going to defend my country, and there's no excuses. They go. Everyone else makes up an excuse. Or, or I'm they, going to go. Back. They bring it home, too. I notice that many of these people, big, strong people, men and women, yes. go to yeah. war, bring yes. home PTSD. Yeah, yeah. And, that's the, and that's where, uh, uh, and I'm glad you, you brought me back on that one, because PTSD, I've got PTSD. And there's a lot of families, including mine, lo losing their fam. We're losing our families, and and nobody. It's not that I want people to care. I just want them to to realize the sacrifices that our young men and women, and us old guys. Uh, you know, you know, I've been through a, a few shootouts, uh, quite a few. I've done some very intense things. You know, I'm a strong guy. But that doesn't stop you from, you know, I, what I look at is those innocent young men and uh, women and children that I killed. And that will be forever in my head. It doesn't matter. Oh, you know, somebody says, get over it. I'm going to punch him in the face. And, uh, you know, I tell my Marines, if somebody tells you, tells you that, hit, hit him in the face and send him to me. And now I'm going to hit him in the face because they're just stupid. PTSD uh, is, 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 it's bad. I mean, I, I don't even know how to describe how, and, and I have it. And, and I have Marines that I have called, they have called me. And uh, I had a young Marine who told me, uh, he, he had, they actually, you know, he was out of the Corps and they took his, his weapon away from him uh, because he was, he was gonna, he was gonna hurt himself. And then he ended up in the mental ward in, in the hospital down in San Diego. And then uh, when they released him, you know, he was still bad, but not as worse, uh, as bad as he was. And I talked to him and he'll never get past this situation where he said, Sergeant Major, I caused my Marines, uh, four of my Marines death. <laughs> I'm sorry. The guard dog is here. Go ahead. He'll oh, okay. in a minute. That's my dog. Okay. Uh, but the, this this uh, young Marine told me, Staff Sergeant, and who I've known forever, um, and he said he said the reason that he you know he he wanted to commit suicide was that he told his Marines to go left instead of right, and 
you know, just make a choice and everything's right in front of you. You can't, you know, you can't see beyond the buildings, what's in front of the building, you know, all that whole thing. But he made a decision and, and it, it didn't matter if they really, in reality, it didn't matter if they'd gone left or right, the enemy was right there waiting for them. They didn't know it. But these Marines, uh, four of his Marines were killed and he'll never get back because they're right in front of him. Well, me too. I mean, it's, it's we're all like this. That's, that's, and that's what I'm trying to tell people. And the, the stories that are in this uh, book about uh, PTSD are my stories because, I, you know, I, there was 10 people who wanted to write a story or something in my book. And I said, sure, absolutely. Never heard from a month later, right? And then you, you know, you know, they're not going to disrespect me. <laughs> and I finally got a hold of him and he said, I just can't do it. I can't go back there again. And I totally understood, of course. I mean, it's hell. And uh, I got on Facebook to make sure that I got a hold of everyone. I said, hey, a story, a paragraph, or, you know, whatever for a book is not worth your physical and your mental health. And they were happy. Oh, thank you. Because you know, it was because I'm the coordinator, you know, the, the senior listed guy. But I wasn't making them do anything, but they felt committed to do it. I'm good. You know, well, I'm going to do it for him. Well, you know what? You are more important than that story. And I had a young woman who uh, a, a, a woman, Marine Sorry Major. And it was funny that uh, that uh, she was in a unit, a, a light armor constant behind my unit that was fixing to go in, you know, we're kind of like stacked up, you know, the order of the battle order, if you will. And uh, so about I mean, years later that we met and, and we described this, uh, I had already described uh, uh, that it was like being at a drive-in movie. You're sitting there watching in our case, task force Tarawa, who was already in Nazaria, you know, and, and, and battle space wouldn't allow another Marino, 6,000 is what we had. And so they're already in a heavy shootout. So you're watching this thing and going, we're next. And then they were behind us and the same thing. And uh, and she described it just like that. It was so, and I say awesome, uh, if, if that's even the right word, because she said, it's like going to, it's like going to a driving movie. I was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly how I felt. And, uh, and she wrote a little story in there and it's in the book. And, uh, uh, and, and, and those things are just, you can't, you can't make that stuff up. Well, you, you could, if you're a, you know, if you're a movie producer, but, but you can't make up those kind of things, you know, just in a flash. So and, when you have PTSD, that movie continues in your mind at night or day or what? All the time, it's like a loop. There's this loop. Yeah, it's like a loop like you this. can't get rid of. All the time. Yeah, and people, because people always say, people say, well, how do you, how how can you write with so much detail and you know this and this because it's a loop in my head. And I can. Do you have any tips for young people as to how to cope with that? Well, first off, PTSD is forever. It's for for life. But what you learn to do. And again, it's been 20 years since I was over there. Um, you learn what you learn to do is you learn to cope with it, and you learn to uh, not dismiss it, but just know that it's, it was the reality. It's not a like I said. You know, people oh get over it. You know, I just ugh. I want to go now smack. You can't them. get over it. No. Yeah, I want I want to just smack them in the face. And because they don't get it, but to help yourself, it's the well. First off, <laughs> I live in the country, <laughs> so I, I'm I'm away from everyone, and but I do get in trouble. My my wife told me what, I got in trouble at the VA of all places. I was actually escorted by the VA police out of that building. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was just a couple of months ago, and, uh, and the first thing my wife said, "Did you take Chewy with you?" And my service dog, and I said, "No." And she goes, every time you don't take them, you get in trouble. <laughs> so you get your, find your service dog is really helping you? Yes. Oh, absolutely. And that's what I was going to say next is, 
you know, get yourself a service dog. It doesn't matter if it's a little one, a big one. You know, you, you know, you don't have to have a horse running around on it. You know, but I've seen you know various sizes, and and that's okay. It's whatever. Yeah, and 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 animals, especially uh, uh, dogs, uh, cats too, but dogs, uh, you know, discovered that they pull away uh, your anxiety. They they help you by Tui in my case has pulled me away from, from people because he knows that there, there's just something going to happen. Uh, sometimes I, you know, I go into this little, I don't know, trance, if you will, uh, and, and, and I flash when I get mad. I have no idea what just happened. None. And, I, and, and other people tell me, oh, why'd you do that? Why'd you do this? What are you talking about? And Chewy has literally pulled me out into a parking lot away from these people, and I don't even know it. I'm mean, like, all of a sudden, I'm sitting on the curb going. So that's when the, I, dog's, when I, the dog, will, dog will signal you to avoid your PTSD then? Yes. And he Literally even, pull you away. Yes, and he has stood wow. between me and other people. Uh, uh, he, and that's the big signal too. And he sees me when he knows when that, he knows when that flash is coming. And uh, he's even grasped you know, he's he's not a, like a big time growl, but if he growls, that ain't good, you know. And so, uh, you know, so someone's being really, <laughs> things to be really stupid. And <clears throat> somebody's going to get hurt. But, uh, uh, and it's, you know, it's forever. And, so and, you know, sometimes there's times where I feel just super great. Uh, and then there's, and, and I've actually gotten better. But then there's still, I have, you know, those, those fallback that don't happen as often as they used to. So you just kind of learn to absorb it, say that isn't a big deal over there. And that's what I've always said. You know, is this really important? What we're going to argue about, we're going to fight about what is, we're going to do, or is it, or is PTSD more important? And of course, PTSD is more important because you don't want to go into that. You don't want to see someone blow up that has all that frustration and that, especially that combat experience and those and those flashbacks that you know of all those people that you kill. I mean, that's it. It's Comes down to that. Real to people than to you, and it lives with you forever. But that kind of stress can be almost virtually impossible to unlose, except yes. that you will eventually <laughs> learn how to control it. So. Yes. I think it's really been something else. I'm sorry for the dog's interruption. My dog is totally protective of me. Uh, <laughs> Aston barks at the bird that comes to get me, the little sparrow. So anyway, <laughs> folks, I'm going to put the information for uh, Gregory Leal's book on the bottom of this recording. And I hope you go out and uh, promote this and buy this book. Uh, Marine Corps. Marine Corps is extremely special to me. I love the Marines. If it weren't for the Marines, I might not be here talking to you. Uh, the Marine Corps came to my Navy family's rescue when our lives were threatened and guarded our house 24 seven for 32 days. They were remarkable. So Marine Corps, Gregory Leal, I salute you. I think the Marine Corps is right up there with my love of the Navy. So I'd like to thank Gregory Leal for coming on today. And I encourage all veterans, write your stories, put them down on paper. If not for publishing for your family, if you don't write history, someone else will. If you have a particular feeling or stress like PTSD, write it down. Nobody's going to understand it unless you explain it to us. You have to explain it to us in simple words so that we can understand. So thank you, Greg, for coming on today. And folks, I'm going to sign off now. I'll be back with another interview. And I appreciate your time. Gregory Leal, thank you very much, sir. And goodbye for now. Thank you. Thank you.